All right, so here we are. This is a tiny little quarter acre plot. It's gonna be Braska this year. This is actually a first year plot. I came in here this spring and it was starting to get overrun with a few clusters of uh, honeysuckle out here and a little bit of buckthorn. And for many, many years, this was just grass and goldenrod, kind of like the edge of this woods right here. I left one uh, black walnut right there as like a scrape tree because every year there's tons of scraping activity right underneath that tree. And that thing's gonna get huge eventually. I could probably cut it down, but I want to just leave it there for the deer. Um, so you can see we got a pretty good kill finally on this grass. It took a little bit for this stuff to die. Um, we tried planting some soybeans in here and the deer have just been pretty much wiping them out. We didn't really get the best germination on the beans in here. And uh, whatever did pop up, the deer have been eating. I mean, the deer eating everything in here. Look at this vine, this vine plant right here. Everything's just nipped off. I even saw some milkweed and they've just been eating on all kinds of weeds in here. And a bunch of glass, see this grass? Even this grass is starting to get chewed on by something, either rabbits or maybe even the deer. I saw some grass down there that was munched on. It's crazy. There's tons of bedding just right in here. And look at this, here's a milkweed plant that's browsed on. Very rarely do you see milkweed browsed on. I mean, this this is just so close to bedding. These deer will eat anything that just pops up in here. Um, so that's why I'm coming in here today. You can see this is uh, two passes along the edge here. It's gonna take a little bit to work this sod up. Right there, it worked up better because there was more goldenrod right there. Wherever you got goldenrod, it kind of uh, works up better because there's not as much thatch. These first year plots can be a challenge to get planted. But uh, you can see right here, I got a couple stumps, some big honeysuckle plants that were in here that, like I said, that I cut out this spring. They're all dying off. Roots are probably all completely dead now. So I'm gonna get a little time lapse of ripping this up with the disc. And uh, then I'll just broadcast my seed. Looks like we got a small chance of rain in the forecast for later today and tonight. Well, I think it turned out pretty nice. This side over here definitely worked up easier. And mainly because, like I said, there was more goldenrod on this side and less grass thatch. This side I had to go over it quite a bit to get it to the way it looks right now. But uh, the, the only good thing about these first year plots like this, like I said, it's a pain to till the ground if you don't have a no-till drill. But the only good thing about um, these, these first or second year plots like this is you usually have very little weed pressure because, you know, like I said, it's been grass and goldenrod, just, you know, just grass cover for many, many, many years. And now that you till the soil and have this open seed bed every year of planting it, you're just gonna get more and more and more weeds every year. So like right now I'm able to come in here and till this up and get a real nice brassica plot, very weed free. But uh, on some of my other food plots that I've been tilling for five, six years now, maybe in a little bit wetter ground than this, you till and you end up with tons and tons of weeds. That's why I've basically just switched to um, full on buckwheat. Um, the, the no-till buckwheat method just mainly because I can till and get a good buckwheat stand It'll be a bunch of weeds with the buckwheat and then I'll just broadcast and crush all the weeds and buckwheat down no tillage and disturbance of the soil so then I can get a lot less weeds and a lot cleaner brassica plot but this plot is brand new you'll be able to till it for probably three years before you start getting um, you know heavy weed issues because you get a few weeds here and there in this plot that seed out and you know, they, you just end up with more and more weed seed every year. So you just gotta kinda take that into mind when, you, when you're planting food plots. Like the first year, second year, probably the best year for least amount of weeds. So I'm gonna get seed in this and I'll just lightly disc it in and it should turn out real nice. So this is what I got for seed. I'll be planting my usual Imperial Whitetail Wintergreens and uh, tillage radish mixed in because this wintergreens blend just has kale and forage rape and a little bit of turnips. So this right here is gonna hopefully be enough for this tiny little quarter acre. Um, this whole bag supposedly plants a half acre, but sometimes I think that's even too heavy. 
um, you got to take a note when you got this nice tilled prepared seed bed um, pretty much every seed is going to germinate unless it gets unless they get tilled in a little deep like I said but um, when you're tilling in when you're uh, filling in gaps like in a soybean plot or any area that hasn't been worked recently like just kind of hard packed rain packed ground you're going to get very low germination rates because you're basically just allowing you know the seed the only way it's going to germinate is if it gets rain and when it's hard packed ground you just don't get the best germination but this loose fluffy stuff and plus the fact that most of them are going to get covered up a little bit man we're going to get 100 percent germination don't be afraid to put your brassica seed um, to till it in because i've tilled it in in the past and the disc only works it up like two inches max you think it goes deeper but if you if you just broadcast the plot and till it in you're better off doing that than just tilling it up and broadcasting the seed right on top praying for rain because next week is all 90 degrees hottest day hottest week of the year so far um, forecasted to be and no rain in the forecast other than maybe tonight so i'd rather get my seeds under the soil where they're not just cooking in the sunlight and just hoping for rain there's actually a little bit of moisture in this soil believe it or not so some of these might start to germinate right away when you got a nice prepared seed bed less is more because these plants if I get them spaced out, you know, one square foot per plant, these things would just get massive, like the size of your thumb stems are bigger. So these tillers radish are going to get huge planting them in mid, mid July like this. So, um, I know a lot of people say that the deer don't eat brassicas when they're super big, but our deer do. And, and most deer will, if that's the only thing around. So, um, yeah, you want to do less is more on these nice worked up plots like this so we'll see how far this gets me um, when I plant this I'm honestly probably a little over halfway done I still got a decent amount of seed left we'll just take a look at what the seed spacing looks like you can see I got a tillage radish seed there two wintergreen seeds there another seed right there look at this there's like a bunch of them right here that's a little thick right there where I just last showed you. Right here is one. Yeah, I'm sure there's a couple right in here that I'm not seeing. Like right here's two more. So I'm not even using a setting on this thing. I just slowly open it up. And over, you know, multiple years of planting brassicas, you can kind of just get a gist of what it should feel like. The, um, the seed population as you're walking along. That way you can pretty much just pick up any cedar and, and pretty much know how to plant the brassica. Don't rely on a setting. It might take a year or two to get used to how thick you should be planting, but uh, it's pretty easy to um, overseed these brassicas. And it's just very crucial to not do it because otherwise they only get about shin high. They start turning yellow in September and nothing really eats on them the whole year because there's just not any volume here. If these things get knee high, I've even grown waist high brassicas before. But that's if you plant like early July. Um, if these things get knee to, to thigh high, man, they just, this tiny little plot just lasts forever, way longer than you think. And the deer just keep pounding it and pounding it and they just eat it right down to the ground. You can see these seeds in here, man, they're, they're really spaced out nice. I got one here, one here, one here. I got a couple right in here. So it honestly almost looks too thick as of right now. I mean, Generally what you want is about one seed per square foot because then that seed can get to its full potential and get like thick as your thumb, get, like I said, knee high or so. So I finished planting this. This definitely looks like it's going to be enough seed. That was like nothing for seed. Those bags plant supposedly a half acre. This is probably a quarter acre at the most, maybe a fifth of an acre. It's really not much. So I just started disking it in now very lightly just feathering it roughly getting an inch to two inch of penetration you can see right here right there's one right there's another one i just saw a rat right here's a radish seed and then you look over on this side where i just went over i guess right here's a radish seed i mean you're not going to get perfect coverage right here's another radish seed but i don't see hardly any of those wintergreen seeds in here they're probably all just like lightly fluffed into the soil. Right there's a couple. See that? I just moved the soil around and there's a seed right there. And I was just like a half inch under the ground. 
I could come back through here and pack some of this down too. It would probably help with germination, but whenever you pack the ground, it, it honestly just helps the weeds germinate better too. But since this is such a weed-free plot, I might just drive around here a little bit and pack it down with the tires when I'm done fluffing it in. I don't see hardly any seeds in here. Right here's a radish seed. I don't see any blue and green wintergreen seeds. Then I come over here, start seeing more seeds. See all these little tiny, tiny seeds? You get these under the soil a little bit. You can see there's still a little bit of moisture in the soil. Maybe not quite enough to germinate these seeds, but you get them under the ground just a, just a little bit. That's really going to help with the germination. All right, so here we are. Not quite sure how long this is after, but uh, this is the first brassica plot I planted this year. That's why they're actually pretty big already. This, the spacing on the plants looks about right. Not too thick, not too thin. Um, I think this is gonna turn into a really nice looking brassica plot. You can see we got a little bit of everything. Here's the tillage radish. They're usually the fastest growing in here. Um, this is probably a purple top turnip right here. And then this right here is the kale and forage rapes. These are usually the slowest growing. Usually the purple top turnips and the radishes are the biggest things at this stage. But in all reality, usually the kale and forage rape is what lasts the longest through the winter. Like I've said, these tillage radishes are pretty much frosted out by mid-December, at least around here. <clears throat> a little bit of grass coming back, but not not really much at all. Got a few thicker spots, like right in here. But like this radish out here is going to look a lot better. That'll be at least a foot tall, foot like foot long tuber brassica where some of where some of these are going to be pretty small radishes which is fine in all reality i'd like to see it just a hair thinner even and i used hardly any seed on this plot like this right here is about perfect you could see it, this is where the deer are walking they like they like to walk in these bare spots when all this stuff gets about knee knee high or even thigh high brassica i have actually ex experienced that the deer I mean, they'll eat on them. They're, they're going to eat on them because they're there. But if you've got a thinner plot with room for the deer to walk around in, they will walk through those thinner spots. But, uh, yeah, it's looking really good. I might have one more update in this video. This will potentially be the, probably the, the first brassica plot out because it was the first one planted. Um, there is a few soybeans in here that survived on this edge here that I didn't disc up as much. Like I said, this whole plot was uh, with the grain drill um, drilled in with soybeans. The landowner here is a relative of ours, and he uh, I sprayed this this uh, early summer, like June or whatever, and he planted all his other food plots along with this one into beans, but the beans just didn't take off, like I said. Just way too much grass thatch and uh, just a little bit of disking in here, and we're ending up with a real nice brassica plot. This right here was a little brush pile from some honeysuckle that I cut out of here this spring. So this was just a big giant brush pile as I was disking around it. And I later, I, later that day, I burned it off. It burned up really nicely. And then at the end of the day, I sprinkled in some brassica seed. I didn't know if it was gonna grow or not because all these ash, all these hot coals were uh, still really hot, but we had a really heavy downpour rain. So maybe some of the seeds up there got washed down into here and then they grew because I, I can't see just broadcasting seed into hot ash. I can't believe those seeds would actually survive. But uh, yeah, can't be any happier with this. This looks like a really nice looking plot. Um, this plot alone would feed the deer really well through the winter. This tiny little plot's gonna hold some deer here, but we got soybeans in multiple different areas on this little property right here. So there'll be a ton of deer around this winter, hopefully. So. Yeah, I'll see you in the next update. All right, here we are. These things are huge. This is, like I said, the first brassica plot I put in this year. Um, you see all these white ones flowering. For some reason, I don't know, this never happened to me in the past, the spot where I buy my tillage radish seed. Like, this is what they're supposed to look like. So they're making the radishes, and those will get 
you know, a lot bigger than that. But it seems like, I don't know, maybe 25% of this, because there's not all of them, not even half of them, probably like 25% of them are like kind of like flowering out and seeding out like that, not really putting on a on a, um, a radish at all. Thankfully, that's only 25%, but usually that, that usually uh, the last couple years I've planted them, that none of them ever do that. So I don't know, a little different seed or something, but this is what they're supposed to look like. All these brassicas just look absolutely ginormous. I mean, look at how big these leaves are. And it's August 31st today, so I probably did plant this plot a little bit early, but I guess that's what you, that's what you gotta do when you got so many different plots to get in. Um, you can't get them all in right at the perfect time, so these are gonna be some pretty big brassicas. I, the deer are still gonna eat on them, but they may not be quite as attractive. Like, this is what they should look like, probably um, you know, two or three weeks from now. This is what this is what you'd want your brassicas to look like right around the mid to late September when the growing season is really winding down. Um, usually when they get this big though, they don't really get a whole lot bigger. They Some of them might just start yellowing off because of nutrients deficiencies and, and whatnot. But like I said, that's probably why they don't be, they're not quite as attractive when you plant them as early because they end up yellowing and browning out a little bit. But um, this will be the last update in this video. This one's kind of got a tuber on it. I don't know. I'm not really seeing hardly any brows on it yet, so we'll see how hard, how much they really eat on it. Like I said, the seeding rate was about perfect, maybe slightly thick actually. I hardly used any seed on this plot, it seemed like. You probably want it more like this, these big gaps. Not, not like completely covered like that. That's too thick. Like this is about perfect right here. You want about one to two plants per square foot. So this is kind of where they have a trail coming in from this goldenrod bedding down there. Might be a little bit crushed right here walking up this way. But yeah, I'm not seeing hardly any brows on this stuff. So we'll see how much they really eat on it here. Right here's one leaf nipped off. Got a couple purple top coming up starting in here. So, yeah, turned out really good. Um, I'll have, uh, oh, right here's a, so this is right where they come in. You can see there's kind of some trails coming in right here. There's a little bit of browse right here on this tillage radish. I would imagine there'll probably be more browse here, you know, this next month here in September, especially when, well, the reason why there's probably not much browse here is literally that whole field basically there's a field there more fields that way and that's all the on oh, the fields across the road are all beans so basically the beans across the road the beans all this direction there's probably like 300 acres i'm not no joke probably at least 200 to 300 acres of beans and then going up that way is all hay fields so there is so so much winter or uh summer food right now for them and you know all the browse in the woods is still green too but that's drying up because it's so dry wow that one's really hammered that there's a water hemp plant that's pretty much completely devoured they love this stuff in the summertime but the first frost kills that immediately and then they'll be hitting this stuff the brassica i would imagine once all those beans start to turn yellow and once we get a frost and it kills all the, all the green vegetation, I'm sure this little, this little tiny eighth acre plot, maybe maybe sixth of an acre, it's not that small, but I'm sure this will really be a good draw right here. Like I said, I, I unfortunately did plant it too thick, I think. I mean, it looks beautiful, but I'd rather have it a little bit on the thin side, like more like this, but it looks okay. All right, I got... This is one of my only, I have one other tilled brassica video coming out. All the other brassica videos are all going to be no-till into the buckwheat. This was like a first year plot here. So, um, you know, I was able to get away with, you know, lots of, you know, tilling and having no weeds pretty much. I could probably get away with that for the next year, maybe two years. But then usually by three, four, five, 
year three, four, five, you start getting, you know, a lot of weeds in the seat, in the soil. Yeah, that's a lot of green here. All right, see you in the next video.